I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of Alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get matched down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy merch. Merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. As you can see, this is the Magnificent Seven. It's the name of this stream. We're it's called the Magnificent Seven Stream. Yes, dear listener. Uh, because we actually have seven people from Discord that kind of banded together to create a list and get this thing going. Some people, um, some people paid through PayPal, and other people did their monthly subscription on Patreon, which you can do for one month and then jump back off. Uh, just to give everybody the idea. Yeah, people have yeah. found very unique ways to get the stuff done, like. I had a very, very simplistic way of doing the thing, but... Uh, oh, yeah. There's, <laughs> you all guys, roads lead to Rome. Yeah, you guys are much smarter than us, so... <laughs> Everybody figures out way. And I'm, I'm here for it, guys. I'm here for it. Okay, right. so should I be reading this now, or are you waiting for the lights? Cause, I mean, okay. No, don't worry about the lights. I, Just I, go for it. I don't yeah. care. Let's go for did it. Did you get the stream symbol? You did. Excellent. Yeah, stream comments. So with seven villagers, Discord members, we needed uh, a... I've never seen this word before. Second. Succinct. Sorry. Succinct stream, stream name. name. And this made sense. The Magnificent Seven is a 1960 American Western film directed by John Sturges. The screenplay by William Roberts is a remake in an old West style of Akira Kurosa. Oh my word. Hey, please read this. I'm 1954 Japanese you. film Seven Samurai. Okay. It initially uh, itself initially released in the United States as the Man Magnificent Seven. The ensemble cast includes Yul Brynner, Brynner Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, Robert Vaughn, Brad Dexter, James Coben, and Horst Buchholz. We may have a question for Vin and Sorry when the last review is done. All right, so the first song is Lepsis, Leptus, Lepitus. How do you pronounce that band, would you say? Uh, Leptus. For Creatures Such As We Are from 2019, requested by Leader of the Seven, Steve McQueen as Vin Tanner. Leptus is a two-man product with a sound not unlike Neavla Viscaris. In fact, these al this album features Neavla Viscaris drummer Dan Pressland. The female vocals are provided by YouTube voice coach and singer Emmy Pellegrino. All right. The first letter is an I. That's interesting. Uh, okay, so this is a whole album. Oh. What what point what point in the thing? This is for Calendros initially, dear listener. What's the timestamp for this one, babe? The timestamp is from twenty eight forty one. Okay. To forty one fifty seven. Okay. Is that the twelve minute song you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. 12, whatever. Gotcha. Me. I did the math in my head. 
whoa, these these are very complex lyrics. I'm looking at the lyric thing right now. I was Holy like smokes. scrolling. I was like, yo, they they did a lot of lyrics in this, this is, song. This is my this is my wheelhouse. All right, here we go. So we're at the 28 minute mark for song 2840 for song numero uno for the big homie Helen Dross. Helen Dross. What's up, everybody? Oh, I, this I just am now looking at the comment section. You're a shadow of A M N. Who's that? Is that one of the people that was listed off? I don't know what you're talking about. Vin is a shadow of, I don't know what that means. Uh, All right, guys. So we're, uh, I'm going to fast forward this to the 28, what now? Uh, 2841. All right, guys, here we go. 2831. 41. Would you say 41? 41. I had it exactly right. And then I fast forwarded because oh. you said, because you said it was 31. I don't Weirdo. believe I did. I'd have to see that. And it's recorded, so. All right, guys. Oh, yeah, it's recorded. What is that going to change anything? Absolutely is it? not. Is it for it you, won't though? Change. What if it you're won't wrong? Change what anything. will you do? It won't change anything. All right, guys. Thanks, BC. So, uh, in six seconds, the song's going to come up. The name of this song is... What was the name of the song again? Well, it's called... For, for Creatures Such, as we, such as we Are. This should be very interestante. Let us begin, dear listener. For creatures. Trouble on picket, baby! Calendros, do I love the Trevolo picking?
everybody in the crowd.
to wear. To where? 57. 4157? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, that's guys, but that's the end of the song. Okay. I'm We're going into the next song, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm not very happy with you guys. <laughs> Why? What happened? I was really feeling the. I was like, wow. I, that, I, that, that, that song. That's. that's a, I definitely whew. see when they said Neo. Definitely reminded me yeah, of Neo. Yeah. I, I, everybody knows Vin hates progressive, but. Uh, this kind of progressive I like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I guess Dan Preslin is leaving Neo, which is a big, big, big loss, man. Oh, really? That's which a, one is he? The drummer. like. Oh. That's a big loss. I wonder why. I guess he's focusing on his family and... Follow Tom <laughs> Brady's example! Yeah. Yeah, I was like, why are you reacting the like the that? People, the people need you! Um, shout out to Dan Preslin. That's the right thing to do, bro. Prioritize your family, all that shit. Yep. That's that's what I'm about. Um, yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. First of all, the musicianship, the musicianship in this song was absolutely incredible. Apparently, there's only two people that are that, that do this entire project, as far as like the the oh, music really? goes. Yeah. Um, really? I love female vocals. Everybody knows that. I, I love the, the the contrast of like hard heavy metal with yeah female vocals. I love that shit. The next thing I need to do is I need to figure out the uh, um, the name of this song because it's absolutely going on my list. What do you mean? Is it different than what's listed here for creatures such as we are? Oh uh, yeah, for creatures such as we are. Okay. Oh okay. okay, 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 okay. Um, yeah, it was it was journeyous, journey ish, where you f I felt like I was going places. Like I love journey songs, and w during this song, like I I don't know what I didn't focus on the lyrics because the um, well, it doesn't matter why I didn't focus on the lyrics, and I was just experiencing the music, and I really was just enjoying the sound of the music, and especially when it was transitioning. This is probably one that would be a great like album listen, just like. Sit back and I just agree. experience. I agree. Um, I, For sure. One of the reasons, one of the things that I do like about the, uh, doing this channel is that when I listen to the music and I don't focus on the lyrics and I know you're coming on the back end with the lyrics, I'm like, okay, let me just experience this song and kind of feel it out. That, um, some of the ways that, it sounded like there was an acoustic guitar in there, right? Yeah, I don't know if it was like a real acoustic or if they just switched it to the clean channel. Oh, okay. Um, it had that same sound that my mother's acoustic used to have when we would just like be, well, we were probably grounded, but we had the guitar and so we'd mess around with it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like that, that, um, whew, the, the, that, that is, that's just, just an unbelievable freaking song, dude. I just kept unbelievable. And, I kept and hearing lyrically, give life, sh shine life. Like I heard a lot about like just like life in there. Yeah, but I don't know if it was. Yeah, yeah. That that you never know. Well, we've got we've got the lyrics up here. Um, and like that, it, it's a very loquacious. Song. It has a bunch of lyrics actually. Yeah, it does. A bunch of lyrics in it. Um, so did you find was there certain um 
chunks of lyrics that you liked a lot or that kind of no, I like I like the whole I like the, the whole thing. thing like it as a as a as a whole I just thought that those lyrics were insane the the musicianship was insane I mean just a really very strong opening track very strong opening track dear listener okay so here we go we've got we've got some of the lyrics here so it starts off saying so I think the song is essentially about the sun um, in the sky? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it if it gets broader than the universe, but okay. Um, let's start there. Okay, so it's life, uh, life giver, burn bright. Hence, life giver, burn bright. That's why I'm assuming it's talking about the sun. Sear flesh from bone, boil blood in veins. Again, that's something that the sun would do. Like if you're going into, you know, heat death. You know, like eventually. Yeah. You know, aside from divine intervention, the world as we know it is mm-hmm. going to get subsumed into heat death. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if he's talking about like um, like the last kind of moments before we all go into heat death. You see what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, the sun is, you know, we're, we're burning out. It's going to go crazy. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Gild this glass heart. Fuel. I am. Right. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. Chase right. away the darkness. Dancing, dancing flames, flames on chariots change. ride to unmake the absence to drown out the stars. Yeah, okay. Um, so it, it looks like it looks like Man, it's one of these one of these times if somebody runs a stream and you guys are good with us breaking down the lyrics, then doing the song, I would love to do a mashup like that. Because like I'd like to have an like, inverted Yeah, review. because you have the con- we I guess we could flip it in the original because people might not like that design. But, like, I would love to be able to hear the lyrics and, like, break down the lyrics. Because when you break down the lyrics, I, I just, I feel differently about the song. So to hear the lyrics and then go into, like, what it is, knowing what you're walking, I, I just think I would really enjoy that. I don't know if it was Christopher Hitchens. It was somebody that was talking about how they would like to die. And he was talking about, like, going into a black hole... And like seeing all the beauty that you would see, you know, as you're traveling into space and all the rest of it. And then the mystery of what would be on the quote other side of it. He was just saying, look, all of us are going to die. But if you have to die, that would be a badass way to go out. And I literally, whenever I think of dying and I think of that example, it terrifies me. Really? Yes. I do not like that. I don't want to be floating through some outer space area. Where am I going? What's going on? I'm good with Jesus comes to get me. I mean, you're 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 still floating in outer space. Yeah, but Jesus is there, so I'm good. But if I'm just like in the middle, I'm saying of like outer right space, now you're floating in outer space. Yes, but right. Supposedly, <laughs> well, I feel grounded here. Supposedly, so. if materialism is true, which I don't believe it's true anymore. So, for everybody who is a materialist who believes in like actual objects that like physically exist within themselves, like you're already in outer space anyway, so. You see what I'm saying? I do. I do. I you're talking you. about you're talking about your body floating in outer space is what you're saying. My, like, no. Separated from the earth. I'm not talking about my body. I'm talking about me as, uh, aside from my body. Like I'm picturing like my consciousness is floating through. Yeah, outer but your space. consciousness your consciousness can't float. Yeah, it's you're, whatever you're, it does. You're physicalizing something that's metaphysical. Your consciousness can't float. It travels. It can't do anything. It's not located in time or space. Yeah, but it's somewhere, right? It's located here right now. This is where my consciousness is. When I take, when I fall asleep and I go into a dream, I mean, my body conscious- is there, but my consciousness is not I in that bed. I disagree with you. I don't think your consciousness is here at all in any of these, the four dimensions we're in. What? I think your consciousness is at least in the fifth dimension. It's not in this dimension, obviously. Why is that obvious? Well, because like you believe that your consciousness continues on when you die, right? Yeah. Okay, so what dimension is that in? A disembodied consciousness, wh- where would that be? Because it, it can't be here? Why can't it be here? How could it be here? You're dead. No, uh, your body is dead, but your consciousness is not. So where is it when your body's dead? Is it still on the earth? Like, where in the earth is your consciousness? Or where in your body is your consciousness? I don't know. I mean, I know, like, you know when people have those out-of-body experiences when they die in the hospital bed? Say again? Yeah. And so they, like, they'll, like, float up above their body or down the hall. And they'll be able to report stuff that they saw that 
they wouldn't have known otherwise unless their consciousness was still there even though their body was stuck dead in the bed so I'm saying you, you are there no they're not there they're observing something that doesn't mean that they're in the place where they're observing it's like if I see something on like a hidden ca- on, on like a TV I'm observing what's on the TV that doesn't mean I'm in the TV right yeah. So just because people are seeing something doesn't mean that that's where they're located. So wait, so because because I'm looking at it like this, and I think you're looking at it like this. So no, you're just, looking I'm at it as it, you're talking. I about, believe that your consciousness exists extra dimensionally. I don't believe it's stuck in these four, the four dimensions. That well, we're the in fact here. that I believe in prayer means I I I also think that we go in other dimensions, right? Right. You like yeah, like uh, you know, if you if you. If you if you locate all of human existence within space time, that's that's not a that's not a Christian worldview. Because God doesn't function in space time, mm-hmm. so that's that's all I'm saying is like your disembodied consciousness wouldn't be floating anywhere. You wouldn't feel a sensation of floating if you were just pure consciousness, because the feeling of floating is a physicalized experience. Uh, yeah, I mean. Right, so if you were just using that word as a placeholder, if you you were a non-conscious being, you wouldn't be floating anywhere, and you wouldn't feel the sensation of floating. No, but you might. You might. Can you message the kids and tell them to turn off the oven? Okay. Um. Ah, shoot! What was I saying? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking like if your consciousness is going, I'm not saying that you're going to feel the sensation of floating. I'm just saying that that's just the word that we have for it now. Like, if there was the I don't know. Am I missing something that you're saying? Because I'm, no. I'm, I'm saying when you're going, your consciousness is going from like, let's say that your consciousness is traveling from this reality to being able to understand that there is more out there. So then you're going to go. Uh, all I'm saying is you're all of those things that you're doing. You're physicalizing something that's non-physical. A consciousness cannot travel. That's something that traveling is something we do in space time. Why so are I'm you saying, saying that can't happen? But there are people that that leave their body to travel places. And didn't the FBI or somebody use some of that stuff? Yeah, so that's that means called it is remote, possible. That's called remote viewing. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, what I'm saying is where the consciousness is located is not in the four dimensions that we're operating in is what I'm saying. So, Why? If your consciousness is here, I don't understand. The consciousness I don't is believe here. your consciousness is here. I'm oh, saying because you believe I, all this is a projection. I don't believe your consciousness is here. Because here doesn't exist is what you're no, thinking. I, no, I believe that here exists to a degree. Well, all, I, all I'm saying is that when we use, and we're kind of stuck with it, when we use physical sort of uh, terminology when we're applying it to consciousness, I believe it's a category error because I don't believe that your consciousness resides in these four dimensions. That's what I'm saying. That so so okay. and anything where we talk about the consciousness going somewhere or floating or anything like that, that's that's a physicalization of something that is non-physical, which those are the only categories we have, so I understand. I'm just saying like, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. But um it, it 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 seems to me to be talking about that moment where, you know, we're experiencing heat death. You know, the sun's about yeah. to melt everything yeah. and everything we know. And uh, your consciousness is projecting your physical observations. Yeah, I agree, XBM. Fush all, fush all, fush all. Um, so so it's it's talking about, it's, it's very fascinating because the oldest uh, recorded religions where, where we're actually worshiping a deity are, uh, is sun worship. Mm-hmm. And so it's fascinating. The irony here is life giver burn bright so like the sun is giving us all this light but in the all it's this really life but in the end of the day it's what's going to ultimately do us in mm-hmm. so it's a very fascinating concept considering like it's funny i was listening to a george carlin thing because i'm doing we're 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 um we're going to be doing a george carlin stand-up review pretty soon here and he said uh, he was talking about why he doesn't believe in God. And he's like, the sun. I mean, we should worship the sun. He's like, I could see that motherfucker. And and uh, I've got physical proof of him and he's yeah. actually doing stuff. And da, 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 da. So I was like, that's very fascinating, you know, because here is a modern person basically doing what ancient people did, which is to say, hey, we can see this we can thing. See it, so we should. Yeah. Right. And a lot of people like shout out to all my atheist friends, but they'll they'll say things like, ha, 
your Bible has life before the sun. It's got vegetation before the sun. And it's like, yeah, ancient people didn't understand that the sun, uh, photo, they didn't understand photosynthesis. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. They were harvesters. They were, mm -hmm. they, they were, they lived in agrarian societies. They absolutely, they probably knew more about the sun than we did. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got these people building pyramids that are like completely in the line with, you know, so it wasn't that like, but of course, these people, a lot of them believe that they're just a bunch of uh, dumb backwoods farmers <laughs> who didn't know anything. It's like, okay, yeah, you can make that assumption. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there's an argument. To, maybe what, what you know, Moses or the Babylonian authors trying to communicate mm -hmm. is that life and light doesn't come from the sun. It exactly. originates from Yahweh and exactly. Yahweh simply uses the sun mm -hmm. as a means by which he communicates life and light, et cetera, et cetera, which mm -hmm. I obviously think that that's, that's the case, but Why it is fascinating. Like that the thing that gives us life, if you give it some time, ultimately is going to destroy us. <laughs> I, I just think that that is, I think that that is massively, massively a fascinating concept with, with some really interesting yeah, implications. You kind of, you see it in more, like, for instance, like food. Food also, that gives you life. But if you overdo it, just like if the sun is overdone, you're going to cook to death. If you overdo f eating, you're going to, you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. So that's another kind of same concept where it gives life, but if it's overdone, it's no good. Yeah, it's uh, sear flesh from the bo bone, boil blood in vain, subhanAllah. Gild this glass heart, fuel am I. Chase away the darkness, dancing flame on chariots ride to unmake the absence, to drown out the stars. Life giver, give life. Reach out, stretch across infinity, to infinity, from infinity. Ribbons of flame across the void. Yellow tendrils grasp at cosmic straws, defy the universe. To grant us sight. I mean, good night. I cannot hear the word infinity without thinking of Buzz Lightyear. I apologize. But when you said to infinity from infinity. <laughs> yeah. Ribbons of flame across the void. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like, you know, when like. Guild, what does that mean? Like, protect guild, it and strengthen it up? No, guild is to, to gold plate something. Like, the Gilded Age, everything was golden. You know how, like, Trump gilded has a golden. Glass heart before it breaks, you know how Trump has, like, a golden toilet, oh, no. and it's, it's a gilded toilet. It's like. Please a, stop. You gold plate something. That's not true. That's true. Oh, he does. He does. He, he does I, have a gilded come toilet. Come on. Yeah, he does. I feel like that is a bad sign. I'm not. No, I'm not mad at. Look, if, if you. If you. Um, tell yourself, look. The trajectory and the purpose of my life is to generate revenue. Yeah. And you begin to feel the emptiness of just having money. You got to, you got to. Oh, oh and, what an and, interesting and, way of looking and, at that. And, yeah. And all the sacrifices that you've made personal and otherwise to get that money, you've got to have something that says that justifies all that shit that you did to get that money. Shit. And I'm not saying like bad things. I'm just saying time away from your family, whatever yeah. sacrifice yeah. you have to make, like you got to have something to say, well, well, I mean, do you have a gilded toilet? You see what I'm saying? So, like, I'm not I'm not mad at Trump for having a gilded toilet. I'm not mad at him. I just a, think it's a bad sign. It's, like, a, it's, well, you, you know, a, it's a pity. It's a pity type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel bad for him. Like, yeah. you got to yeah. have that. Um, sorry, guys. This review is going to be a little long. It's a 12-minute song. What do you want us to do? Plus, there's a bunch of lyrics. You know how we get down. I'm sorry. An elegant orbit, two bodies is one, gravitational caress, a waltz of fire to scorch the abyss. Okay, so that's the relationship between the sun and the and the earth, right? Mm -hmm. An elegant orbit, two bodies is one, gravitational oh. caress. Cool. So I that, like that that sounds to me like he's talking about the, the gravitational caress. Right. Right. That's good. Yeah, like and and, and a waltz of fire to I, scorch the abyss. I, I like I have been a waltz of fire. I have been just deep diving into science and scientists <laughs> and people that yep. don't share our faith at all. Uh -huh. It's not on the radar. And the more I look into this stuff, the more you just see the poetry in, in, oh. in the... It's unbelievable. The poetry in what? In, in science and cosmology. And we're just like literally like in the parking lot of the universe. When we're talking about the vastness, especially me yeah. as an idealist, it's like you're experiencing point oh 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 one percent of what ultimate reality actually is, mm -hmm. and just even like just the amazing 
the relationship, the gravitational relationship between the sun and the and the earth is insane. It's incredible. Mm. Um, if 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 the the people like biblically speaking, like if the Bible was to get an update, like the type of poetry that you would see would be unbelievable. Like if you look at some of the poetry in the book of Job relative to the water cycle or the or mm -hmm. you know the storehouses of frost when it says where where is the storehouses of frost and mm -hmm. just unbelievable stuff mm -hmm. like just a comment like when God shows up to Job and starts commenting on nature and like where were you Those when were my were favorite. You? Where I think it's chapter you? 37 or something and talks about the lightning and the him tell like God telling the water like this far will you go and no farther here is where your proud waves must stop like I love that I used to read that every time there was a thunderstorm yeah yeah, was a yeah this far no further yeah yeah, yeah. like uh, unbelievable stuff unbelievable stuff and then anytime that there's like a tsunami or something where the water goes like ballistic it goes way further I'm like yo that it there had to be clearance for that yeah <laughs> otherwise it wouldn't have happened life givers shine light to set fire to the corner of the world rid the shadows from the eternal walls vanquish the monster of this design reveal the path from you to i open the sky travel the distance and i will make us whole uh I steal a molten kiss from the cosmos suck the flaming air from open lungs you give what you are i take what i am a celestial merchant with nothing to trade i am alone Jeez. I think that that's the Earth talking, because the really? Earth is essentially alone, as in the only planet with life on it. Oh. So I steal a molten kiss from the cosmos, like that's like you're melting, because <laughs> the Earth is melting, mm -hmm. um, in in the, you know. So I think that that's like personifying the Earth. But the Earth sucks the flaming air from open lungs. Well, yeah, because it's it's all the all the people are dying. Yeah. So when it says, "You give what you are, I take what I am," a celestial merchant with nothing to trade, I am alone. I mean, that's just mm. that's so brilliant. Your light wanes, your energy expires. I've taken too much. See what I'm saying? Oh. So the sun gives light. Yeah. See if you go up here, it says, "You give what you are," which is the sun is all, everything in the sun is the sun. Mm -hmm. And it gives a slice. I take what I am, a celestial mirth. There's nothing to trade. It's a one-way relationship. Right, exactly. Right? Um, and it says, I'm alone. Your light wanes. Your energy expires. I've taken too much. Engulfed entirely by what I've desired. Your death will be the death of us both. There it is. Heat death. Yeah. So it looks like it's talking about heat death. But my heart, my heart, it beats still. Be still, my heart. Gild this glass heart before it breaks. Jeez. An elegant orbit. Two bodies is one. And then they had the, the, the woman sing that part. And it was just massively unbelievable. Um, so, like, <laughs> this is like, um, it's an unbelievable, unbelievably poetic way of talking about, like, you know, heat death and all that. Like, you've got nihilisms, like, oh, you know, like, all of us are going to die, you know. But it's, it's a very uh, beautiful way of talking about the relationship between... Oh, yeah the earth and the and sun, the sun yeah. and the uh interdependence the interdependent well not really the interdependence the, the the complete dependence of the earth on the sun um and and like the sort of romantic relationship between it's interesting because in the hood and xbm is here like you've got the nation of gods and earths and so the dude is the god and the the girl is the earth mm -hmm. um so like, so uh, XBM like, oh God, Vin and Earth story like that's that's because oh, he, that's he what's coming yeah oh. I think pretty sure he's from the Bronx too. Oh, okay. Um, but man, that's what so a funny! I always took that in a really hippie sort of way. <laughs> that's so funny. But yeah, like, like, like it, it's it's absolutely amazing. You got people like Elon saying, "Hey, we need to populate Mars and all the rest of it," but. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that if we went into heat death, Mars is still in the neighborhood, so it wouldn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, like on the one hand, I'm like, yeah, that's a cool idea. But on the other hand, I'm like, is I it mean, really going to help us? I think we need to go a little farther. You're delaying the inevitable at that point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we would have to come up with a way to, you know, reverse that process within stars. Wait, is Mars closer to the sun? I'm not sure. We're the third planet from the sun. So... There's only two other candidates, yeah. but 
I like, thought Mars was like at the end, but but I, like either way, like it, we can get to Mars. We've got a rover on Mars, supposedly. I, I mean, I don't know if you believe that we have a rover <laughs> on Mars. <but. laughs> um, like that that shit is like crazy. Yeah, but Mars like, is after us, so the, it's colder. So the, the mus- a, it's a little delayed. If we got there, we'd well, have a little bit of time before the sun would then go there. Well, it it just depends. On I what? I don't know like how far away that is. Well, I'll tell you because I happen to know. It is 92.96 million miles. Is that what it's saying right here? Or did I? Yeah, but I, what I'm off. saying is if the sun were to go into heat death, what? How fast is that going to travel? What I'm saying is like, would it matter? So for example, like oh. if, an ex, if an atomic bomb went off and the tar, and ground zero was our house, right? Like mm-hmm. everybody around here is going to die. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know what that scale is. Well, it goes from 92 million miles to 14, 141 million miles. So Musk has stated that his goal is to, to preserve human consciousness, not necessarily humans. Wow. Right. Like, that's that's the thing. Like, he's got an assumption that consciousness is some physical thing within these four dimensions mm-hmm. that he can, which he has, people have to believe if other things are, are going to be true for them. I don't. Um it would take us nine months. There is no way of getting away from a supernova, at least nothing we can fathom in our way of understanding the science. So if our son dies, that's all she wrote. Yeah, everything in the neighborhood is a wrap. And Mars is still in the na- Mars is still in the neighborhood, so it's a wrap. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um What's fascinating is he did mention uh the concept of purpose uh here. And so that that was very fascinating to me. Um, because again, I, I asked a question before, like if we're in a universe where the ultimate principle is chaos and disorder, then why in the world do we want purpose in the first? People say, "Well, we make right. our own purpose." Like right. I understand that's that's the this answer. Why are we but the question our own is, purpose? why do we, why do we, we have this desire? burning desire to create right. purpose in the first place? If the overall principle of the universe is just random chaos, or to put it another way, why why are we so obsessed with 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 uh, purpose if the ultimate principle in the universe is ultimately non-personal because only persons worry about purpose. So I had, I, I think like that, that answer, I haven't heard an answer to that. I've heard people say, well, you don't need God for purpose. Like that's fine, but that's not the question I'm asking. I'm asking you is you're saying that there is, that ultimately in the universe, there is no person mm-hmm. that the universe is ultimately impersonal with no purpose and and no stated aims or intentions. Okay, so then why is it that you have it, and why is it a universal aspect of all sentient beings yeah. that are sentient to our degree? Why are we obsessed with having purpose? Mm-hmm. That's the question. And there are many times when our purpose uh, runs counter to our survival. Uh, hence, people dying for their country, or dying for this, or dying for this purpose, or dying for that purpose. People would rather die than live a life without purpose. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times the search for purpose actually um, impedes the progress of life. As a matter of fact, there's nothing that we do that doesn't have some purpose behind it. And it goes beyond just mere survival. Mm-hmm. Um, so especially in Western culture, all the archetypes of, the, of Western culture have a super persona assumed. Mm-hmm. everything we do including the scientific method by the way the people that invented the scientific method were not saying well this universe is completely chaotic so we should be able to find systems here <laughs> i'm sorry mm-hmm. that's not what's going on in the mind of francis bacon he mm-hmm. wasn't saying like well everything is random there's no rhyme or reason for anything so we're gonna find a way to, to see how all this shit works it was the assumption that there was a super persona that uh that 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 created everything and initially, the job of scientists was to reverse engineer and figure out how that super persona did it. That's what happened. So that's what I'm saying. I, I just think looking at that stuff, it's very, very fascinating. And the more I, I'm, I'm in this other form, it's like an atheist form. And I said, you know, can, can somebody help me with uh, mounted defense for physicalism? in light of what we're what we've discovered relative to local realism and essentially the death of local realism and you could tell these people aren't you know what i'm saying yeah so it's just just very 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 fascinating stuff very very fascinating stuff kind of just to throw a couple things in there with what you were talking about one is 
have you ever heard of the the Wonder Weeks, the me, a mental the mental leaps of like infants? So I was looking into this, and apparently, like you can clock, like it's completely clocked, and you're able to know like when they're all of a sudden going to start wanting to eat a lot more, or when they're. But oh, really? Re- yeah, it, it's Pass really interesting. Water? Yeah, it's, it, the, what I read was really interesting here. But one of the things that I thought was fascinating was already by just a couple weeks, they are trying to find patterns. So they can't really see very good, and they don't really understand a whole lot. Thank you so much, honey. Um, they yeah, just said it right there. Thanks a lot. Um, they so they're already looking for patterns. So Seneca, who's you know seven weeks, is already looking for patterns in his world, and that's what gives them some security is finding that like okay, oh this is the same and this is the same. Right. And so like if if there's no order and there's no whatever, then like even infants are looking for that like at such a tiny age. And then I was thinking about, like, when we see ants, we don't think, oh, these poor things are being forced to, you know, a lot. They're, they're doing their purpose. They're they're collecting and they're they're setting themselves up for the, the winter or whatever, and they work so well together. It don't you find it? May, maybe there's a really obvious answer. I mean, besides the fall, like, how is it that an ant that we would, you know, step on, you know. Some people would. I always feel bad when I even step on an ant. But, you know, most people could step on an ant and go on with their day and they don't even feel a little tinge of bad about it. You probably don't even notice if you squash an ant on your walk to work. Um, but here, but but we struggle with knowing our purpose. Human beings struggle with, like, like you said, what is the reason for life? And whether or not, like, especially when people get to crisis points, and maybe that's what pushes people to crisis points, is not knowing why, what, what's happening here, yeah. you know? And yeah. maybe it's kind of like, you know, if you stick somebody in a box and you tell them that they're going to be, that they're going to come out, like there's that whole thing with the rat, like they stick them in the water and it's, and it's struggling and it makes it X amount of minutes. But if you pull it out and then put it back in, it'll go for like days or something like that because it thinks somebody's coming back. It thinks that there's, there's some, so I don't know, like maybe that's what kind of pushes people to points of like a breakdown is that there's, there's no clear set purpose that they see for their life or for them personally not ju- like it, if if you're talking nihilism you're looking at all of humanity is like that's to, to look at your own life and say this is going nowhere and i have no purpose but to look at all of humanity and say they all have no purpose we all have no purpose that's a really hard dark place to be for an extended period of time would that bring somebody to a point of like okay actually i do need to find a purpose um is there a purpose i don't know you know what i'm saying like do do people hit a crisis point and then they start talking about purpose or is not knowing the purpose a part of what would bring somebody to a crisis point and why does the ant know its purpose when human beings well i think i think for a lot of people especially with the rise of the the new atheism which is dying but when they when they think about the ramifications of what that means like on the one hand the fact of the matter is and many atheists thinkers have said this Bertrand Russell etc there there's there's a big pro in atheism in that you can make your own rules you don't have to answer to anybody mm-hmm. I can right. do what I want yeah <laughs> right right but the big con is well yeah you get that trade-off but on the other hand you have no ultimate reason for being <laughs> you're just an accident of of mm-hmm. uh of of history and you're yeah. gonna and if we space out your life in context of the age of the universe, the age of the universe right now is about 14 billion. If we spaced out your 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 88 years, you're like less than 1% of 1% of 1% of Oh, yeah. You know, so yeah. so it's completely meaningless. And then they go, "Well, okay, I'll have to I'll have to come up with meaning to give myself, you know, reason to get out of bed in the morning." It's like, "Great." The deeper question is, why is meaning so important to you in the first fucking place if your first presupposition is correct? Right. And to this moment, you know, Bertrand Russell was talking about that. You know, Bertrand Russell wrote wrote a whole book about, like, um, philosophical issues, problems that are unsolvable from that worldview. So, like, Mm -hmm. one of them is the induction problem. Why, Why do you believe that all these principles like gravity and all the rest of them, why will they apply tomorrow? What is the force that's keeping those things applicable yeah. tomorrow? How do yeah. you know the sun's going to rise in the east tomorrow? Yeah. Well, because I've, I've, it rose in the east every other day. Well, one, you don't know that. You don't know if it rose in the east two million years ago. And secondly, 
Um, you cannot know definitively it's going to rise in the east tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Just because something was true yesterday doesn't mean necessarily it's going to be true tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, uh, have you died? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so, so, you know, though, those are really, really deep problems. And I, 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 because we're in kind of a microwave generation and, and a Twitter generation, like people aren't asking that deeper question underneath. Yeah. And that's the issue. It's like, I understand that people say purpose is subjective. I don't believe purpose is subjective, but that's not the question. The question is, why do you want that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the sky is empty and everything was chaos and you were born out of chaos and you're going to die in chaos, mm -hmm. why do you have this obsession for order and purpose? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the question. Um, so uh, anyway, I love this song. The song is a 10 for me. Uh, it's my favorite song so far, and I think... Is it the I, song of the night so far? It's a song of the night so far. <laughs> Somebody was making fun of me yesterday. It's always a song of the night with me. <laughs> this is a song of the night! Uh, I love this song. I copied it down. I'm going to play it. It's going to it's gonna give birth to about two or three uh, very uh, uh, faded knockoff songs, I'm sure. <laughs> just like when I listened to... Uh, Neo. Yeah. <laughs> like that last one I came up with was just listening to hours and hours of That's Neo. That's so crazy. Um, okay. Inspirational. Um, I'm going to give this one a nine. Danny Leo G in the house. A nine. How dare you? How dare you? I mean, that's a pretty damn good story. All right, dear listener, well, we shall... that one was from Kellen Dross. We shall return. Shout out to the big homie Kellen Dross. The night has just begun, and this is in seven. Vincent Soraya. Vin out. Sorry out. Go. Bye.